Hello, my 3D printer peeps. I'm sitting here next to the Creality CR10 Smart. We are going to go ahead and set this up, adjusting our eccentric nuts, installing our filament, updating our firmware, connecting to Creality Cloud, and printing our very first test print. Let's get to work. This printer does utilize a series of eccentric nuts. Not one, not two, not three, but four on the bed. Make sure your bed has no wobble and make sure it moves forward and backward smoothly and does not feel like there's any bumps in the road or flat tires. If you feel any wobble or flat tires, take your finger, reach in there and push on the wheel. Can you turn it or is it firm? It should be firm. If one of these wheels is loose and you can spin it, Take a number 12 wrench, put it over the eccentric, and turn it. Not a lot, just a little. Maybe a quarter turn. Get your finger in there and push on it. Is it firm now? If it is, take that same wrench. Back it up just a tad by turning it the opposite direction. Check your bed for smoothness. If it's smooth, leave it be. If it doesn't shake, leave it be. If you're feeling a flat tire sensation or you have rocking in the bed, turn the printer around and locate that single eccentric nut right here. If you are able to rock the bed up and down, tighten this nut. If the bed has a flat tire feeling when you go forward and backward, loosen this nut. Once the bed moves freely, leave it alone. Bring your eyes down to the front of the printer and you will see right here a belt tensioner. Bring your eyes to the center of the printer and you will see a belt tensioner. This belt is right here in the center. This is the tensioner for the bed belt right here. You can go ahead and feel it. If it's firm, like a trampoline, leave it alone. If it's loose and floppy, turn this tensioner to the right until it's firm. If it feels really tight, turn it to the left to loosen it a bit. The belt should be firm, but not overly tight. Loose, but not overly loose. Again, grabbing the print bed, you should be able to smoothly move it forward and backward. If you move up towards the hot end, you will see that same tensioner here on the left side of the printer. The belt for that tensioner is right here, pulling the hot end left and right. Go ahead and take your finger, press it on that belt, and underneath, press it on the other side of the belt. If they feel firm, leave them alone. If it's sagging and loose, tighten this tensioner. If it's overly tight and the hot end feels stiff, loosen this tensioner. If you feel like you've got a flat tire, thump, 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 loosen this tensioner. Your hot end should move smoothly left to right. If you were to grab your hot end and wiggle it, you should not have any movement. If you have movement like this, your eccentric nut is too loose. Look behind and underneath the hot end and you will spot this eccentric nut. You will see the looseness of the hot end. Tightening this eccentric nut will apply pressure on this palm wheel to grip these three wheels together on this rail and secure this hot end. Let's do this now with a number 10 wrench. You will put the wrench over the eccentric, pulling towards you in the direction of the screen. Slow and steady, small adjustments at a time. After each adjustment, test the hot end. If it moves smoothly, and cannot be rocked, stop, you are done. The two remaining eccentric nuts are on each side of the hot ends axis, here and directly across. This eccentric controls the tension between the three wheels that this carriage rides on. Adjusting this eccentric can be a little more complicated. Depending on how perfectly square your printer is assembled, the tension on this wheel can become greater or lesser as it moves up and down. However, to get you started, bring your hot end 
to the center of the printer, take your finger and pinch on this wheel. You should be able to just barely turn it using firm pressure. If it's super loose, adjust this eccentric. If it's super tight, adjust this eccentric. Make it so you can just feel it. You may determine that you need to make further adjustments to this nut after some testing, but this is a good starting point for those eccentrics. With everything assembled, we are now going to double check the many screws that hold this hot plate onto the printer. We will do that by making sure the printer is turned off so our steppers are off, and then unlocking the glass bed by opening these clips, pressing our fingers underneath the indentations here in the hotbed, and lifting the glass up, and then sliding it gently forward. This will reveal a series of screws holding the hot plate to the printer. You will take an Allen wrench or your own tool and simply go into each one of these and just snug them up just the tiniest bit. I noticed almost every single one of mine was just a touch loose and I'm providing just a little extra snugness. No more than maybe an eighth of a turn each. So long as none of these are loose, you should be good to go and we'll put the glass bed back on. To do that, simply slide it in carefully, place it down and press it underneath the clips in the back. You may find the clips in the back to be somewhat stubborn. Don't apply any excess force on this print bed. You don't want to bend anything. Once it's on, you may lock the bed in place with these two clips. I like to pinch the glass and then lock the bed. Keep in mind, if you make any changes to the bed like this, you will need to rerun your auto bed leveling and be very careful with your Z offset as that may need an adjustment also. Let's load our filament and prepare to turn the printer on for the first time. Just like properly loaded toilet paper, your spool will be loaded over. Bring up the filament, take your snippers, clip the filament. I don't care about angles or any of that nonsense. Make sure the tip of the filament is as straight as you can get it. If not, you can simply work it straight by pinching it between your fingers and it will hold that form. Feed it through the filament runout sensor. Slide your finger in there to guide it into the hole. The CR10 Smart uses Creality's locking extruder. You'll need to unlock it by pulling that handle forward. You may then feed the filament out the extruder to the hot end until it stops. Once it stops, lock the extruder. You're done. You have loaded your filament through the filament runout sensor into the extruder to the hot end. Now is the time you've been waiting for. We will turn the printer on. In the back, there is a red rocker switch. Flip that switch to one for on. Your printer now has available power. To turn it on, you will press and hold the silver power button on the left side of the printer. Here we are greeted with the home screen of the CR10 Smart. The CR10 Smart has Wi-Fi and supports Creality Cloud, so we will go ahead and connect it to Wi-Fi right now by pressing Settings, Advanced Settings, Restore Network, yes. We will now switch to our phone. We will touch Workbench. We will touch the plus button. We will touch Add Device. We will choose CR10 Smart. We will check the box. We will touch Next. And you will see the device shows up via Bluetooth. Click on that and choose Setup Network. I will choose Wireless LAN Settings.
I will connect to Greg Adventure. I will type in my password and I'll press next. Disregard this error message and let it continue. And there we are. I am going to name this machine not Frumpy. Don't ask. Finish. And press close. Here you will be greeted with your CR10 Smart, also known as Not Frumpy, and you will see it has prompted us for a new firmware update. We will go ahead and do this now. Press update and say yes. As you can see, the Creality Cloud app is indicating that the firmware is being downloaded and now updating to the machine. Huzzah! Update successful. Press OK. I am refreshing the screen by pulling down and you will see it no longer shows. A firmware update is required. For now, I am going to return home. You will see the Wi-Fi signal implying that we are indeed connected to wireless. Unfortunately, the Nebula camera is not compatible. However, if you have the original Creality camera, you may go ahead and plug that in to the camera port on the side of the CR10 Smart. And you will see by touching the camera icon that the camera is indeed working. And we are now able to monitor the print process as well as create super cool time-lapse videos. Go ahead and press the gear button Press recording settings, turn on time-lapse photography, and turn on automatic recording. Turn on upload to cloud. Do not turn on remove the nozzle unless you want the hot end to move away from the print for every image. This dramatically increases print time and can reduce print quality. Go ahead and back out and you are now ready for both time-lapse and print video recording. We can now print from Creality Cloud. However, one time and one time only, we will print the test file provided by Creality on this memory card. Before we do that, we must level our bed. The CR10 Smart contains no bed leveling knobs, no CR touch. Instead, it's leveled at the factory and utilizes a strain gauge to automatically level the bed on the setting screen where you already are, touch leveling and touch auto level. Touch start. Prior to beginning the auto leveling process, the machine will automatically heat the hot end and the bed. And we are done. You can go ahead and press the back button and press the home button. Here you will see the printer has set its Z offset at 0.2. Let's go ahead and test that ourselves. Press the home button. Let's test this by sliding a piece of paper underneath our nozzle. I can't get it under there, it's pretty tight. I'm gonna press the up arrow one time, raising our Z offset to 0.25. Here you can see, still super tight. I'm gonna press it one more time raising the Z offset to 0 0.3. Too tight. 0 0.35. And there you go. The paper is underneath the nozzle. I'm going to leave it at that. Once I start my test print, if I decide I need to make a further adjustment, we will do it then. But at least we know now the nozzle is not going to gouge into the glass. Go ahead and press the back arrow, press home, and you will now see the Z offset showing at 0.35. Okay guys, it's now time to run our first test print.
Before we do that, we are going to help prepare and break in our new glass bed. I'm going to do that with Scott's Blue Shop Towel and some 99% IPA in a quality spray bottle. This one's a Zep. You can use any IPA, 70%, 80%, 90%. I don't care. Just pick one and use it. Glass beds are fantastic. They're very durable and there are many ways to prepare and clean them. There are also many ways to add additional bed adhesion or to assist in bed release. However, many brand new glass beds will hold too strong. People will struggle to get them off and they'll scrape and pry and bang and rip and please don't do that. When glass cools, the model releases itself. But at first, your glass bed may hold excessively strong and you just need to break it in by printing on it and cleaning it with IPA. These blue cloths are great. They have no lint. They are very strong. They're super absorbent. They don't rip or shed. And yeah, as you print, let it expand and contract, heat and cool, spray it down, wipe it down. Over time, that excessive hold will go away. And when your printer cools down and you approach your model, it will already be released and you simply just pick it up. So print, clean, repeat. That's how you break in your glass print bed. I also like to use green bamboo glue or a quality hairspray on my glass. However, the number one most important part to printing successfully on glass is clean. Because this is a Wi-Fi connected device, you can print directly from Creality Cloud. However, this time and this time only, we are going to use the test file included on the memory card from Creality. Before we do that, there are two things I want to discuss about the memory card. This is the card that came with the printer. I do not recommend using it. I never recommend using the card or thumb drive that comes with your printer. Please replace it with a quality name brand card. 32 gigabytes or less, formatted FAT32. I will include a link for the card I recommend. This card has a download of the CR10 Smart memory card, and this is the card that came with the CR10 Smart. The files included in this package are totally different than this one. This one has really obscure test files, a rabbit, a vase, and some kind of bowl. This one has more traditional files, the test dog and the test cat. I don't understand why the files are different, I can only assume at some point Creality replaced the files on this card with the files on this card. If you have the three files included on this card, I would go ahead and print the rabbit as your test file. I have copied the dog from this card to this card and I will be using the dog since the dog is my traditional test file. If you'd like the files on this card, they are on my OneDrive. If you are a member of my Patreon or a member on YouTube or subscribe to one of my Udemy courses, you will have access to the files on this card in my OneDrive. Click the card in, press print, and select the file you want to print. If you have the original files that I had on my card, you will see RB, FLO, and CA. Rabbit is RB. I suggest using that one. I'm going to press dog. Go ahead and press the play button. The printer will begin heating the nozzle and hotbed. You will see there the desired temperature for the bed is 45 and the bed is currently 32. Once this completes, it will then heat the hot end. This is a great example of why I do not believe in using pre-sliced G-codes from other sources. I believe 45 degrees to be too low. I'm going to touch on that. I'm gonna to touch H and B temp and I'm going to change it to 60. Press the back arrow, and you will now see it is going to heat the bed to 60. Also keep in mind, this is our very first print. We will have to watch the very first layer. When it begins printing, if it's grinding into our glass, we need to raise our Z offset. If it's printing above the glass and not sticking, we need to lower our Z offset. So when it prints, we will touch this. We will touch Z axis compensation and we will watch as it begins printing the first layer. We will switch to the smallest denomination and watch as it prints the first layer. 
If it's too high, we will touch down one at a time. If it's too low, we will tap up one at a time. If it's grinding into your glass, tap up a bunch of times to get it away from your glass and then begin working back down. I am going to leave that screen open and we will do it together. This is a difficult print to set your Z offset on because it is such a small print. However, we'll do our best. The hotbed is about to reach the set temperature of 60, in which case it will now switch to heating the nozzle. The nozzle temp is 200. I'm happy with that. We'll leave it alone. It appears the G-code is set to run an ABL before the print, so we will have to wait this out. At this time, if the printer left any blobs of filament on your bed, feel free to go ahead and just pick them off. The print has begun, and I can see it's a little low, so I'm tapping up one at a time on my Z offset. Until it looks better. Here we go. You can now see the filament that starts coming out. When you hear that extruder clicking, you can tell your Z offset is a little too low. Continue up until the clicking stops, and you see a nice, fat, solid layer printing. The layer should look smooth, not rough. The layer should be sticking to the glass. Ideally, we'd be using a model that allows us to take our finger and rub that first layer. If it moves out of the way, you go down. If it stays put and feels smooth, you're good. If it stays put and feels rough, you go up. Once it's smooth and stays put, you're good to go. Do not make any Z offset changes after the first layer. If you feel your first layer still needed work, go ahead and make those adjustments on your next print. Don't be afraid to cancel this print and start over. However, even if your first layer isn't perfect, that's okay. This is just a test print. The following layers will compensate and you should be good to go. Unless it's not sticking to the glass. Then you wanna go ahead and start over and get that Z offset dialed in. One test doggo underway. Here we can see our video feed on my iPhone using the Creality Cloud app working very nicely. You can also monitor this feed on creatycloud.com. So here I am on creatycloud.com monitoring my CR10 Smart, and I wanted to show you something really cool. If you look right here, you will see your CR10 Smart has LED lights built in. You can turn them on and off remotely by clicking right here. There they are. See them turn on? Your LED lights. Now we can go ahead and click it again, and they will turn off. On. Off. And that's a really nice response time doing this remotely through creatycloud.com. Super cool. And there it is, absolutely flawless test dog. You can see we have got serious bed adhesion. We will go ahead and let this glass cool. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the raft from our dog. This should pop off nice and easily. And it does, leaving us with a beautifully clean, perfectly printed test doggy. Here at the controls, you may also power off your machine without turning off the rocker switch by simply touching off and saying yes. And here we are 
our CR10 Smart is complete. This test doggy printed absolutely pristine and we are ready to move along adding the CR10 Smart to our workshops. You are on the 3D Rundown YouTube channel. I'm Greg Adventure, your instructor on 3DRundown.com and setting up the totally awesome Creality CR10 Smart. Printing our very first test doggo was today's adventure. Hey.